Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl D. Dunn Elizabeth and here I am with some more tips and motivation to get you guys started, to get you guys being consistent on your journey, hitting your goals each and every day. So, the topic that I want to talk about today is a question that I get asked a lot and it's like how to start, like where to start, what to do when you do not know what to do. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to give you guys three tips on how I got started, what kept me going, and just give y'all the whole rundown of when I first stepped my foot into this whole weight loss thing, which was over three years ago. And of course, my mindset and everything has definitely changed and progressed risk over time with me being on my weight loss journey so i have so much more to offer versus my first year starting i've learned a lot about myself i've done a lot of research so of course anytime when i feel like a topic is pressing on my heart that i feel like i need to share i'm coming straight to you guys so i've done one of these videos before but i just wanted to re revisit this topic again on how to start your weight loss journey so when it comes to starting my first tip is to Figure out your caloric deficit. And the reason why I say this is because I know, like, if you have never tracked anything before, if you have never even thought about tracking or knowing what macros are, it could be very challenging. But the reason why I recommend everybody starting with nutrition, starting out with finding their caloric deficit, is so that you can continuously get those results over time. So that you can continuously, even when you get to your goal weight or get to your goal body, you can still stay there. Because with me being around a way where I feel like okay i'm comfortable with it is still a struggle to stay there maintenance is way harder than losing so by picking up those habits early on like learning how to track your calories track your macros early on it'll be helpful for when you get further into the journey and you want to loosen up a little bit you want to go hang out a little bit more you want to be super duper strict anymore you still have to keep those habits in order to keep all you know everything that you have worked hard for so the first step when I started was my friend Cam gave me my caloric deficit. I downloaded my fitness pal and I started tracking. My first calorie amount was 2,300. I started at 2,300 calories a day. I was 311 pounds when I first started. And I used to smoke a lot, so I didn't really have an appetite. So I would only eat one big meal a day, which is about maybe close to 1,000 calories. So it's easy for me to say, okay, if you don't eat enough, your body goes and kind of to in starvation mode. Your body holds on to the fat. So the fat that you're trying to lose, you can't get off if you're not eating enough. And when I first started, I was very unaware that under eating was just as worse as overeating. And when you under eat, what happens is your metabolism slows down, which makes your, it harder for your body to burn fat, which is your main goal, to lose weight, to burn that fat. If you are not eating enough, your body does not have enough to burn off to keep your metabolism going and going and going and going. So, what I had to do was, I had to put myself on a schedule. So, I'm pretty sure people that's watching, if you're intentionally trying to eat 2,300 calories, it's very, very hard. I can easily go to brunch. I can easily go out on a night and eat 2,300 calories with no hesitation, with no thought about it. But when you've been intentional about tracking your calories and tracking your macros, sometimes these big numbers can be very, very hard to reach. But one thing that is important to know is that when you first start, nothing will be perfect. That's all a part of the journey. Learning your body, learning what works for you, like what works for me may not work for you. And in a sense, when I first started, 2,300 calories as my deficit for when I first started will not be the same for you. And that's very important that you know that everyone's body is different, everyone's caloric deficit is different. That's just what it is. So what I had to do is put myself on a schedule. I would eat in the morning when I first woke up, and then about two to three hours later, I would eat again. I tried to aim for three meals a day, and I tracked it. It still was a little challenging for me to get close to that number, but I kid you not. After like a week or two later, when those times rolled around, I was starving. Like, it took nothing for me to get my hunger cues on track. And, by, and from that point on forward, I had no problem with eating all of my calories i had no problem with hitting those numbers so that's why i would recommend starting with the caloric deficit because nutrition should be your main focus when you're starting a weight loss journey that should be your first step even if you're not going to find your caloric deficit even if you're just taking a step to go to the grocery store find more healthier foods 
Start by just being aware of what you're eating. Start by choosing healthier options versus fried food all the time. Just making healthier steps towards your nutrition. But if you want to hit it right on the nail, go ahead, start with figuring out your caloric deficit and get the tracking ASAP. So that way, over time, you can learn how to track. And by before you know it, you'll be able to track without even thinking about it. Hit your macros without even thinking about it. And the process will become way smoother when it comes to hitting your goals. And for me, as being a trainer, if my client is following their calories correctly, it helps me easily know what to adjust when it comes to making sure that they keep their results coming and they don't plateau. Because if you plateau, like say you've been on your weight loss journey and you've recently plateaued, it's probably because something's off with your caloric deficit. So even if you are eating a whole bunch of healthy foods, you still could be eating way too much way more than what your body is burning off that's why i suggest starting with a caloric deficit starting with figuring out your calories download my fitness pal and get to tracking so which leads me to tip number two tip number two is to ease into exercise so for me i was very athletic when i first started but when I got to college, I really didn't work out besides walking around the 40 acres. I went to UT. So besides walking around the 40 acres, I was not into exercise. Me and my, me and my friends would go to the gym time to time, but nothing really seriously intense. So when I started to exercise, my main focus was, okay, I'm going to go to the gym two times a week just to ease my body into working out. The one thing that I see a lot is a lot of people throwing themselves into exercise throwing themselves into trying to eat everything right, throwing themselves into trying to cut out everything that they love, and that's what we call cold turkey. Who wants to be a cold turkey? I don't even want no cold turkey on Thanksgiving. That's never been my thing. So, I always recommend easing your way into exercise. If you have not stepped foot in the gym, don't you don't have to start in the gym. You can start with just going for a nice walk. If you've been going to the gym consistently for two days, stick to those two days for about three weeks. If you could consistently stick to those two days, then after those three weeks, take it up to three days. And then after those three weeks of just kind of throwing, throwing and getting some workouts, maybe reach out and find a program to follow. Maybe reach out and find a class to join. Slowly progress into getting your yourself onto the regimen getting yourself onto a schedule because if you overdo it if you burn yourself out you're doing more harm than helping yourself make progress because you have to ease your body into it you will be sore so do not overdo it when i first started i went to the gym two times a week y'all my exercise schedule was so simple i would start off with a one minute walk on the treadmill with two weights Two five pounds. Arms used to be dead. Used to be tired as hell. I would start there, and then after that, I did 25 sit-ups. Crunches, actually, because I couldn't do no sit-up. I did 25 crunches, 25 jumping jacks, 25 squats, and then I finished off with a five-minute cool-down walk. And within that five minutes, I would try to run one minute. I did that workout for the longest until I felt like, okay, this is getting too easy. But I did not pressure myself into going harder. That first week, I went two times a week. Then I was like, okay, I'm feeling good. This is feeling good. Let me try three times a week. And I eased myself into it. The more you ease yourself into it, the, the better your body is going to accept and fall into place when it's time to start working out even more. So I always recommend finding you a schedule. Like if you're a person that's super duper busy, Find you a schedule where you know for sure you're going to go work out. And then when you put that in your schedule, make sure you show up. It's so easy to make excuses. It's so easy to just not show up for yourself. But think about your goals when you easily come up with an excuse as to why you can't go work out or why you can't show up for yourself because you told yourself that you would. It's so easy for us to blame a lot of outside factors because i know i used to all the time i used to be like well it's never nothing healthy to eat in the house or well i never really have time to go work out the bottom line is you make time for what you want to make time for so when it came to me working out like i will pass up a lot of things just so i can make sure i went and worked out and that's just all about prioritizing your health prioritizing your goals like if you set those goals show up and show out do not make excuses and learn how to listen to your body it's one thing to make an excuse of like oh i don't feel like it or oh, i'm tired uh, and it's another thing to make an excuse like oh okay well i worked late i worked uh, a double i didn't really get much sleep that's when you rest when you know you have not got enough rest and you know that when you go to the gym you won't perform so it's very important to listen to your body when it comes to exercise and stick it to your goals so when i first started i was super duper du like 
super duper consistent. Well, I'm kind of lying because when I first started, y'all, I would do so good Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, I would go hang out. Because remind y'all, I was in college when I first started. So, baby, Monday through Friday, your girl was a fit queen, and then on the weekends, I was in them streets. Sixth Street, turned up with my heels on, walking down the hill, getting ready to get lit. But either way it go, when Monday rolled around again, I still was back on track. Sometimes it's so easy for us to feel like, okay, this right here might make me fall off. Or, oh, if I, if I do bad one weekend, it's so easy for you to sit there and, like, guilt trip yourself instead of just getting right back on track. So, I'm here to say that when you first start your journey, you will not be perfect. You will not do everything right. And I think that's important for us to understand that, Failing is a part of the process. Quitting should not be a part of the process. That's the difference. You can fail a lot, but when you quit, that, that's a whole different story. We, we might bump our head a couple of times. We might take a little week off, but always get back on track. And that's a part of being consistent. Consistent is not, oh, okay, five months straight, you did everything you're supposed to do. That might be consistent for somebody else. But for me, consistent is, okay, yeah, I did good for two weeks. Maybe this weekend I kind of fell off, but then the next two weeks I'm back on track. But either way it go, I'm still hitting those goals. I'm still showing up for myself. I'm still doing what I'm supposed to do. And being, you know, holding myself accountable when it comes to what I want for myself and what I want for my journey. So, of course, if you went all the way in, 100% consistency, you would get those results super duper quick. So always keep that in mind with what your goals are and how fast you want to get there. It, it's a lot of quick fixes out here, but it's nothing like following a good nutrition and doing your workouts and being consistent. Those are the three things that literally helped me get to where I am today. Those are the, the three things that kept me where I am today. Because, baby, let me tell y'all. After I lost this weight, I thought it was going to be so easy. Like, once I got down to my goal weight, I was like, okay, oh, yeah, this is a piece of cake. Maintenance is even harder. I would rather keep losing than try to maintain. But having those habits in place for when you first start will be the key to getting to where you want to be and staying where you want to be. That's just the bottom line. And if you are struggling to start and if you are watching this video, here is a sign to get up, get out, and do something. Because literally the only person, the only thing that's stopping you is you. And I also had to tell myself that. Like when after I got bit by that snake, I sat in the house, cried for a week. And I was like, okay, done. It's time to do something different. It's time for you to get up and do something different. It's time to make some shake. Get out your comfort zone and change. What change was for me right then and there at that very moment was nothing like what changes for me now. I didn't think like, oh, okay, I'm going to lose weight. I just knew that once I healed, I was going to do something different. And I just kind of floated towards living a healthier lifestyle. And I knew that it would come with a lot of commitment and it would come with a lot of change. It would come with a lot of sacrifices. And I feel like in life, we have to be willing to make those decisions when it comes to our health. Because each and every day is another day for you to be the best version of yourself. And whatever that may be, show up as her. Show up as him. Show up as the best version of yourself. So if you're getting ready to start, if you're sitting down thinking about it, here is your time to start. I'm going to leave in the details below how to submit a request for your caloric deficit. Go ahead, submit that request. Get the track. And y'all know I have so many what I eat in a day videos. These what I eat in a day videos is not for you to follow exactly. It's for you to use these meal ideas to put into your calories, to put into your macros, and see how it works for you. Do not cut out your favorite foods. Give yourself time. Ease into the process. It's so easy for us to want to do everything when it comes to trying to lose weight because you want it all fast. But those same 20, 30, 50 pounds that you're trying to lose did not come overnight. They didn't. And I think that's kind of a realization that we have to have when it comes to starting our weight loss journey is that 50 pounds that you're trying to lose did not happen overnight. So you cannot expect for 30 days to pass and for those 50 pounds to be gone. And if you go into the journey with that mindset, it will be so hard to stay committed because you are only being driven by the outcome. I always explain this to myself because I struggle with this a lot, always focusing on the outcome. The outcome does not make you who you are. What you acquire does not make you who you are. We, we are so easy to attach ourselves to, oh, I'm done because I lost 150 pounds. No, I'm done because I put myself through trials and tribulations. I put myself through, I put myself out of my comfort zone to find my true strength. That's what made me who I am. Going along the process is what made me who I am. Not the end result. Not being 150 pounds lighter. That is not the true reward. The true reward is what you learn about yourself along the way. The mindset shift 
mistakes that you make, the changes that you make, the realization of realizing that change happens outside of your comfort zone. That's the most rewarding things when it comes to being on a weight loss journey. And I always tell people you have to learn how to embrace your body, love your body every single step of the way. People lose so much weight, get down to their lowest weight, and literally hate where they are. Because most of the fixing, most of the healing needed to happen inside. And each and every day, I'm working on it. Each and every day, I'm working on it. I'm not perfect. That's why I come on here and talk to y'all to share y'all, share with y'all my struggles. Share with y'all some, sometimes how I feel when it comes to being on this journey. It's an up and down. It's a roller coaster sometimes. But no matter how many times I go up and no matter how many times your girl go down, She's still gonna keep holding on. And that's what you need to realize when you're getting ready to start. It's gonna be it's gonna be a hard journey. It's gonna be challenging. It's not gonna be easy. But if you are willing to make that commitment, if you are willing to give yourself, to give it to give give yourself your all. Give yourself your all and get to where you wanna be, get to where you deserve to be, then let's do it. What's stopping you? Ask yourself today, what's stopping you? And I hope that this video was helpful. Like I said, go ahead and look in the details below. Submit your request right now. Don't wait any longer. Get ready to start. Start today. You don't got to wait till Monday. You ain't got to wait till the first of the month. Start today. And y'all already know the drill. With that being said, come back and mess with your girl. Peace out.